Hello once again, I'm Veronica Chambers and welcome to this Black History Continued Conversation on Black Girlhood, where we explore coming of age and the importance of sisterhood. We're still at Howard University and I'm elated to be joined by three community builders, creatives, advocates. These are wonder women who like believe in the power of sisterhood. Please welcome the one and only Glory Edom. She's the founder of Well-Read Black Girl, a book club and digital platform that promotes black literature and sisterhood. Glory has won numerous awards for her work supporting and sustaining literature. She's also the editor of two amazing anthologies, Well-Read Black Girl, Finding Our Stories, Discovering Ourselves, and a new anthology on girlhood, which will be published this month. She is also a proud alumni of Howard University. The work of Christine A. Platt reflects her practice of living with intention. She holds a BA in Africana Studies, an MA in African American Studies, and a JD in General Law. She is bad. <laughs> she's written over two dozen literary works for people of all ages. And when she's not writing, Christine spends her time curating the Afro Minimalist, a creative platform that chronicles her journey to intentional living. Last but not least, we have our friend and certified woman warrior, Jody Patterson. She is an activist, an entrepreneur, and mother of five. When her son announced at the age of three, Mama, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy, she set out to inform herself, shift her own biases, and change the way our community understood gender. A graduate of Spelman College, she's also the author of two books, The Bold World, a memoir of family and transformation, and Born Ready, this true story of a boy named Penelope, which allows us to hear the voices of her children. Okay, let's get into it. So sisters, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Thanks. Let's start with this question. Okay. What's your favorite defining memory of girlhood? And maybe one that represents a little bit that tells us something about the woman you've become. That's a good uh, question. We're looking at you, Jody. I, know, I love I'm it. Like, let's start with Jody. I love that question. Okay, so. My dad and my mom, my dad's from Harlem and my mom's Southern, so I have that influence, right? Um, and there are so many things that they said to me that stick and have, that resonate with the woman I am, but I think the one that I, I draw on the most, too. Um, my dad told us, you're not born to be pretty, you're born to be powerful. And that, and he played that out for us. So like, if we wanted to wear our jeans under our Sunday dresses, he would say, who cares what they look like? They're comfortable, let them wear them to Abyssinian mm. Baptist Church. <laughs> if we wanted to not brush our hair, which was, I remember this one time, this spring, we didn't want to brush our hair. And he said, great idea, let's do uh, an Afro contest. Who can go the most unbrushed Afro by Easter? You're not born to be pretty, you're born to be powerful. So he really rooted us in who we are from the inside mm. and our feelings. Um, that was one thing. And then the second thing that really sticks out for me is when I was going off to college, with all this, you know, power in me. Um, and I said, Dad, you know, I have big dreams about college. He said, baby girl, you can go anywhere in the world you want. The whole world is yours. Make any choice that you decide, but I'm only paying for a black college. <laughs> so he clearly met, made it so that there's power and there's blackness. And that was, that was uh, I guess, how I see myself right now as a woman. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. that is wonderful. You want to go next, Glory? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I spent so much of my childhood at the library. Same. And my mom was like, these books are your friends. And so treat, with them, treat them with kindness, treat them with respect, like mm. hold them, cherish them, don't use them as disposable objects, mm. you know? So I had to be like, I had book covers. I yeah. was always like yeah. being so precious and holding them with such care. Mm. And then clearly, as I like grew older, that kind of you know, went into every aspect of my life, like mm -hmm. whether it's a book or a relationship or anything in between to be, mm -hmm. treat things with care, yeah. you know, especially if it's like something that a community is gonna share and borrow. The mm -hmm. library is such a special space where so many different people come in, whether you're young or old, and you're sharing things together. And so that was something that was always like really important for our, for me and my mother and our family to just like share and be considerate when it comes to, you know, the objects that you love. It's funny, I spent a lot of time in the library as well growing mm -hmm. up. Um, I grew up in South Florida and there really was not much to do. Go to the beach, go to the library on the weekends. Um, and so I too have fond memories of that. I think my girlhood memory is 
really wanting my mother to tell me what I should be when I grow up. Aww. To be? Mm. Yeah, oh. and I would be like, what should I be when I grow up? And she would be like, I don't know, what do you want to be? Mm. And I'd be like, I don't know, that's why I want <laughs> you to help me, right? Um, and I realize now like what a gift that she was giving me, which was whatever you want to be, whenever you want to be, do that, right? And you know, I've reinvented myself many, many times. And so I'm just so grateful mm. that she did not tell me, you should be this or you should be that. And it, it was frustrating when I was, I was like, help me. I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And she, yeah. You will figure it out, right? right? And, um, and so I think that's one of like my favorite like girlhood memories of not being told you should be this because you're a girly. You should be this because as a black woman, you now have an opportunity to do this, right? It just took a lot of the pressure off of me to just figure it out, right. you know? That's an incredible amount of freedom. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So we're on the campus of Howard University, and Gloria and Jody, I know you guys are both proud alums of HBCUs. Um, can you talk about the schools you chose and tell us a little bit about your experiences of sisterhood on mm. campus? I know, Jody. you write about it in your book. I talk about it, I write about it, I live it. I was about to say, I you mean, live it. It's Spelman, <laughs> so when my dad said, you know, I'm only paying for a black college, I ended up going to Spelman. And uh, I think it was one of the most defining shifts. Mm. I went to an all white, predominantly all white girls school in New York City, and then going to an all women's, predominantly black college in the South, just like rooted me. Prior to my pre president was Dr. Cole, but prior to that, Spelman was really traditional. So it was white gloves, it was curfew, wow. and it was, you know, you're, be smart, but marry, marry well. Yeah. When Dr. Cole came in, she said, you might want to ground yourself in family, but also be an activist. Mm. So it was like this combination of activism and family um, mm. that is what I carry today. It redefined motherhood for me. I think of mothering as building, mm. not just mothering as task mastering, and I think that's from Spellman. Spellman mm. said women are, whether you birth or not, mothers. Yes. We mother causes, we mother people, and do it based in activism and the love of the family. Yeah. I love that. Wow. Yeah. I love it too. It's beautiful. Well, Glory. we are on my campus right <laughs> we are now. Oh, no. Our with Glory. <laughs> HU. I mean, there, I can go on on and on about the reason why I came here, but the number one reason was because of my dad. Yeah. My, da my dad is an alumni of Howard University what as was well. What my mom doing? She didn't tell me nothing. Yes, dads were like. So you know, it was like automatic. <laughs> He's like, you are going here. I love and it. so I would come on this campus as a young person. Mm -hmm. I was here at like 10, 11. He would come to alumni events and things. I was on the yard. It felt like an extension of my home. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like who I became here, it just helped me me just embrace my blackness in a whole new way like it took away any any sense of self-doubt like the moment I started being on this campus and meeting friends and being in community I just felt so proud of who I was and it wasn't as if I wasn't proud before but it amped up a lot you know this is this space the legacy um it's, it's just a feeling. It is in the air. It is. It really, really is. And I think... You guys you, are just making us I jealous. Know, we're looking at each other like... Yes. So, Christine... You guys are honorary. Honorary. <laughs> I need all the honorary. I go for it. I'm just so drawn to it. How did you... We're talking about home. We're talking about homecoming. How did you find home in your college experience? Ah. Uh, well, unlike these fabulous women over here, I did not go to an HBCU. Um, I went to a PWI. Um, and, you know, as a first gen, you know, I think that there's also something there, right? When, yeah. you know, your father is, yeah, yeah, you know, um, it's like, you're going to go on this campus, you're going to go on this campus, and that roots you in a different way. Um, but I think oftentimes what happens when you're first gen is you don't have that guidance, mm -hmm. right? I picked the college that my best friend went to. Like, yeah, we're going to go to college together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think what, what does happen oftentimes on, on the campuses of predominantly white institutions, and I don't know if it was this way for mm -hmm. you, but we sort of form our own little HBCUs, yeah. right? Like all yeah. the black folks find each other. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was just a very beautiful experience, right? And I think I learned to navigate the world in a way as, as a black person, as a black woman, with all of the racialized <laughs> drama and issues around me, but I was able to do it in a safe environment with 
my people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so even though we were on you know, a campus that was predominantly white. We had our own little village and our own little community. Um, and I, I, it was just a beautiful, it was a beautiful experience. Probably not as beautiful as you No, but. we gather. <laughs> That's true. We gather wherever yeah. it is, whether it's on a campus mm -hmm. or on the streets. Yeah. We find a way to gather and make our HBCUs, make yeah, our yeah. Tulsa's. We do. Make our churches, right? We do. And mm -hmm. you know what's so funny, Jody? I love that you say that because, and I'm sure some of your friends will be able to say this as well, I know they came to visit you. I know if they oh, went yes. to a PWI. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I found like myself on FAM's mind campus. Mind blown. <laughs> yeah. I would go to FAM's campus yeah. all, you know, whenever I really needed that extra dose or like, you know, your friends are talking about being on the yard mm -hmm. and you're like, I want to be on the yard. What is that like, Homecoming. you know? I'm so yeah, I feel like I had the best, the best of both, the, of both worlds, I would I say. I love it. You know, I know that movement is so much a part of our experiences as black people, as growing up as black women. Um, Jody, I know that you did gymnastics growing up. I would love to talk about like each of you what kind of sports or movement or dance meant to you? Like, how did you come to fully inhabit your body as a black girl? It's so important. I think we underestimate um, sports, competitive sports. Um, for girls in particular, I think, well, one, like there is a uh, correlation between mental flexibility and physical flexibility. Mm. So just as you can train your muscles to be mentally flexible, you can cha cha train your mind for mental dexterity. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's important. The other thing is, I'm I don't want to be treated fragilely, and I have to say this carefully because I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking mm -hmm. about um, as a person, I am so able-bodied, and if if I train hard, my body will work for my spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I learned that through gymnastics. I was also in the circus. I was a circus oh, acrobat. Oh, that's so <laughs> amazing! The Big Apple Circus. But you know, the <clears throat> the idea of being limber, understanding how to fall and get back up understanding the mind-body uh, uh, connection. Yeah. And then also being unafraid of death-defying moves. Mm -hmm. As a gymnast, you're, you're flipping and twirling on a bar, and you have to be able to psych yourself into something you've never done before. You have to psych yourself into trying new things and believing in it and having all your senses awakened. So I think whether it's tennis or track and field or gymnastics or circus acrobat, we need to get our girls into sports, have them compete and have their bodies work for their souls and mm. not the other way around. Yeah. I love that. I love have that. their bodies work for the I souls. Love that. I love that. You know, Jody, hearing you say that, it makes me think of like dancers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, you know, dancers talk about how they're so in tune with their bodies, yeah. right? Because so much of what you were talking about, that agility is, is really like learning yourself, yes. right? And learning your body and learning to appreciate your body and you know, how we heal and how we can grow, right? I, I mean, I feel like there's so much there. Um, I did track and field, but boy, would you run? if I would have had, if I would have had an opportunity to do circus, <laughs> I would have did circus for sure. I would have did circus. Um, so I did relay, four by four relay. I did um, hurdles, triple jump, long jump, the whole nine. Yeah, and I feel like um, even now it has, it's something like if I'm stressed out, I'm like, let me just go for a run, yeah. you know? Let me just go for a run, let me just go for a run. And I, it, it does, it just teaches you a lifelong awareness and appreciation, I think, for your body. Yeah. It also opens up your creativity. I, I did not do track and field, and I wasn't done, a gymnast. Would you have done circus? I would have done, yes, right? I would have done circus. I was a cheerleader, <laughs> I did pep squad, I had a dance troupe that me and my best friends named Twin Plus. Oh. They were twins and I was the plus. I love it. I love so, it. so we were always dancing and always like very fluid and just like open to just trying new things. Fluid. Like, yeah, you know, if, when you're not like embarrassed, you know sometimes when you're dancing, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You're trying to figure out the eight count, yeah. but like being in tune with who you are and giving voice to your identity through movement, mm -hmm. I think is so crucial and it allows for just more creativity for yeah. sure. I love it. That's great. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, Well Read Black Girl. It is the fifth <laughs> anniversary, am yes. I right? Yes, it is. Congratulations. Yes. And you I'm, were at the first, you were at the second. And yes. <laughs> I just, I mean, the community that you've brought together. Can you talk about starting our own spaces and what advice you give to other women who want to like make a movement in some shape 
way, oh, shape, yes. or form? Well, without question, being on this campus, being a student in Howard University is what started Well Red Black Girl in so many ways. It allowed me to look around and work with my peers and understand the value of literature. This is the, the campus of Zora Neale Hurston, you know? Um, Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison, hello, the yeah. queen. So many iconic, beautiful figures were here. And it allowed me to see that if I want to create something, if I want to build community, I just need to like look to my neighbor, mm -hmm. ask them, you know, <laughs> be in fellowship, mm -hmm. you know, and like not be afraid of the no. Like yeah. I am not afraid of the no. The first person I asked to be part of the book club was mm -hmm. Naomi Jackson, who I absolutely love Naomi. Her book was the star side of Bird Hill. Mm -hmm. It was a small bookstore and I invited her to my book club and she said yes. Wow. You know, she could have said no. Mm -hmm. When she said yes, and me like not being afraid to ask her or invite people, strangers on the subway, people mm -hmm. that I just like met that I was just so excited about this book and I wanted to talk to them and form this book club. That was what the beginning of the movement was. And in the first year, even the first two years, it was 20 people in a room. You know what I mean? It was like- And now? And now we have almost <laughs> over 400,000 people on Instagram and, you know, thousands and thousands of people following us. But like those, I wasn't looking for this immense like return in quantity. I just wanted really good intentional friendships and conversations. And I wanted to support the authors. Like you we met did. in the beginning too. I was just going to say, yes. do you remember? I read both of your books yeah, for book club, you know? Well, Jody was like official, official. I was like indie pub back when like indie pub was not a thing, right? Like. It is and always a thing. Baby. Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah, and I just I remember, you know, there was so much stigma around self-published yeah. books back then, um, and I think that that has been such a pathway for so many Black authors anyway, historically. Yeah. Um, so I didn't I didn't have that same sort of, I guess, feeling about it um, until you're like, I want to get my book in the store, and they're like, and who is your publisher? <laughs> I was, oh, it's me, and they're like, and I just yeah. remember you selecting my indie pubbed book yeah. and it was it such so good. it was it was so amazing it was so like, amazing you were wonderful and there's so many wonderful authors that you know whether you self-publish or you're with a big house it, it doesn't matter like the talent and the work is there and we i want to support that and i want to yeah. cultivate that space so we can read and yeah. fellowship together and it's not just about the books it's like mm -hmm. how can we love on community one it yeah. was community and i it. love that element of choosing first yourself yeah. and then choosing each other yeah seems so powerful I want to ask one last lightning quick question. Since we're talking about girlhood, yeah. if you had to give a message to your 15 year old self, mm. it's a classic, but it's a goodie. Mm. So like Christine, last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I feel 15 sometimes. Um, oh, you're Christine, gonna put me in the hot Glory, seat first? Okay. And then Jody. Okay. Um, oh. What would the message you would give to your 15 year old self? You know, I was so whimsical and creative and just, I was a special 15 year old. Um, and I would tell, I would tell my 15 year old self to just continue to be that, right? Like the parts of me that, um, you know, at 15, I thought were I'm so weird or I'm so, but I still embrace that part of who I am. I think those are the parts of me that have made me who I am today, right? To be able to be creative and tell stories and, you know, to reinvent myself and those things that we talked about. And so I would just tell her to keep going and to also not worry about being thin. Oh, I, Jody. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that, but it's Nobody so true. Nobody wants to hear this story, it's, but it's a it's true a, story, especially as a black woman mm -hmm. and as a black nobody woman growing up in nobody. the South. Yeah. With nobody. Um, in fact, we actually do have a body. We have yeah, bones. I was about to yeah. say, yeah. like, you yeah. literally yeah. have a body. But <laughs> yeah. you didn't feel like you had no. one, you know? Because it was not the It right. was not the body. And I, you know, I'm, I, I love that, you know, you talked about your experience in, in gymnastics and circus. And, you know, I'm wondering, did I embrace my, even though I had feels about it, yep. did I embrace it a little more because I was an athlete and I got to see the other benefits mm -hmm. of being tall and thin, right? But it was an issue. I wanted some curves, mm -hmm. but I would tell her, don't worry, they coming. <laughs> <laughs> the curves are on the way. <laughs> they coming, girl, hang in there. Glory. <laughs> um, my 15 year old self, like you, I was really silly. I mean, not silly, I'm silly. Yeah, but, that's why we um, get along. <laughs> I would say, you know, 
turn the obstacles into popsicles, Aww. you know, <laughs> like just be, you know, own your story, be yourself mm -hmm. and the things that seem challenging and feel like they're never going to end. They do yeah. the end and things you'll learn from them. Take that lesson and be reflexive and just keep going. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Keep going. Okay, so I've had this thought recently. It's been like over the last couple of years. What do I want to teach my children? And what do I want to teach myself? And what I've come up with is this phrase called starfish. I've been telling myself to starfish. I've been telling my children to starfish. And for me, I think it looks, I, I spend a lot of time on the beach in Martha's Vineyard. And so I was thinking starfish, they stretch out and they touch all aspects of life. There's no girl starfish or boy starfish. Uh, they touch it all. Uh, and if a limb is severed, it regenerates. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I've been saying and tattooing and mantraing, starfish, don't ever underestimate your infinite potential. Don't be just girl or boy. Don't be yeah. just 50-year-old woman or 13-year-old child. Yeah. Be all things. Yeah. Be everything. Because we really are non-binary in that sense. We can just be. Okay. So I say starfish. I love that. Can we all say starfish? Yes. yes. You know, that makes me Going think of really quick, Jody. really yeah. quick. Yeah. So I have this saying that is, I am not a grown woman. Mm. I am a growing woman. Yes. Oh. And may I always be growing and never fully grown. And that starfish now, that will be my image for that, right? Yeah. Because it just takes some of that pressure. Mm -hmm away right may we all be growing yeah you know? we always grow and become may we always be growing i love this thank you Veronica, so much for joining us jody glory together christine oh, and you. it's been a wonderful conversation thank, thank you. you we love you and adore you for oh, that you're so wonderful thank you yes so thank you so much for having us thank you